for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip with the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another tip for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over pass defense tips. I'm going to give you guys 10 pass defense tips, tricks, and cheats that will maximize your pass defense in every single gameplay you play. As always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, it's going to get right in the video. Now, this first tip is something that you can do before the play even starts. When it comes to maximizing your pass defense, you want to make sure you have the right players in the right positions. So when it comes to substitutions, you're going to want to do a number of things. If you have a corner back blitz happening or something of that nature you always want to make sure you have your fastest player there uh, when it comes to pass defense and pass coverage you typically want to make sure that you take these linebackers out and put in additional safeties especially if you're playing mutt safeties will do things that linebackers won't do like things like jump for balls uh, just overall have a lot of times better pass defense and they're also faster when it comes to usering, uh, which this is going to be the position that you're typically controlling nine times out of ten, if you want to be a good user. So, all for all these reasons, you want to make sure you have a lot of speed at these linebacker spots and a lot of speed at any blitzing cornerback spot. Next up, one of the most important things when it comes to playing defense is knowing the weakness of the defense that you're running and protecting it first, whether that's with adjustments or with usering. A defense like this, which is a cover two does have multiple weaknesses. One of the biggest weaknesses is right down the middle. Even with this middle read, a lot of times the linebacker won't react unless there's a receiver in the area pulling him straight back, which is something that typically doesn't happen. A lot of times it's typically something that comes late into the area that this linebacker is nowhere near uh, you know, in position to take care of. So I can take care of that with an adjustment, putting him on a middle third, or I can just basically user that area myself, or at least keep an eye on that area myself, uh, making sure that nothing really gets through there. The next weakness is going to be with the outside cornerbacks. Typically, you can change this by setting your cornerbacks to 25-yard, 30-yard you know, zone coverage depths. Things like that will definitely secure uh, anything deep, but it will typically leave you vulnerable and weak underneath. So these are all things you can either choose to do uh, manually by yourself, or you can choose to do with adjustments. Cover 3 has its own set of weaknesses. It doesn't really get beat deep as easily as other defenses like Cover 2, but it does have a weakness right up the, uh, the seam here between the deep zone cornerback and the deep zone safety. These hook curls are usually supposed to drop into those areas. Uh, they do a pretty decent job for the most part, but in all reality, that's definitely one of the biggest weaknesses. Another weakness is short routes to the outside because the deep zone cornerbacks outside drop back so fast. All these things can really pick apart a cover three, but they're not necessarily a one-play touchdown like cover two is uh, when it comes to deep zones because it has a lot more deep zone coverage. My next tip is going to be how to use it. There's two different ways to use her whether you're using man coverage or zone coverage in zone coverage you really just have to pay attention to what the zones around you are doing uh, on this next play here, I'm just basically picking something with a kind of a flood concept. You typically want to take the receiver closest to you, and you can see you can basically turn into a man coverage if there's nothing else immediately open in your area. If we watch the replay here, you can see the first receiver I have to cover is the one closest to the quarterback because I'm the inside linebacker. The closest to the, to the line of scrimmage is going to be the tight end. He's going to be uncovered if I don't take him first. 85 and 16 they both have cornerbacks or linebackers outside in front of them so they will take away any immediate throwing lanes but there's nothing doing that to 81 so ultimately i have to take that route away first basically cut that off and you can see i can turn essentially into a man coverage because there's nothing else really in my area now on this next play i'm going to show you guys how i essentially uh you know maintain my area going from spot to spot first off we have some short routes then we have a deep route which i have to get back on you can see there's obviously a technique when it comes to watching your area. So on this play here, I know I have help on both sides of me. Uh, I just have to react to whatever receiver comes into my area first. And it's the same two receivers. The play is a double drags play. So I drop down on it low just in case, uh, you know, that's that's where the it's going to be a quick throw. And I know, like I said, I have help on both sides. So I don't have to stay here long, especially since I see 15 opening up over the top of me. So it's really simple. When it comes to usering, you just have to know where your help is and know where your help's not. I know where my help is not. My help is not right over the middle where's my assignment. And I essentially just have to drop right back on that and take that away. Now, when it comes to playing man coverage, number one, I never really suggest using somebody who has an assignment. If, if I were to use somebody that has an assignment, it would typically be whoever's covering the running back. 
The reason for that is simple. Nine times out of ten, running back might not go out on a pattern. If he does go on a pattern, though, say it goes down to a flat route, I have to use that, leaving everybody else one-on-one. -on -one. I want to typically cover in man coverage the same way I cover in zone. And the only way to guarantee that I do that every single play is by using a pass rusher or somebody that really doesn't have much responsibility at all. So basically, if I use this guy, even though I'm going to have much less pass rushing effectiveness, I can still do the exact same things where I can basically double team wherever I think the ball is going to go. Because ultimately, when it comes to man coverage, a lot of different routes can beat man coverage. My next tip is a little bit of a cheat, and it's something I like to call route bumping. In the NFL, a cornerback or a defensive player can do anything they want to a receiver within five yards, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. This is most successful against people that like to run drags, especially double drags. Uh, route bumping is something that's kind of critical when it comes to defending these type of double drags plays. Now, what is route bumping? Route bumping, first of all, is basically just a technique to slow down a receiver's acceleration, because ultimately, if they come off the line free like this, they're going to be right in their acceleration and then the defensive players going into their back pedal are never going to be able to catch up so the first thing i'm going to do is I'm be very aggressive i'm going to come down and i'm just going to run into the players this first one here i didn't get all of it but i definitely got a good chip on it and you can see i got enough that he's even going to run into his own receiver a little bit making sure that he's never going to get full acceleration by the time he gets passed off to that linebacker uh, who's going to have to try to cover him the rest of the play then i'm going to do the exact same thing with the next guy i'm just going to bump into him again i'm going to get into his way you can see all of this basically slows down the receiver's progress now here number 16 i probably could have stayed with him based off of the fact that there is no next defender even though i was trying to pass him off to hopefully a cornerback but you can see if number 40 over here is in a much better position to hold down this drag even though it was only for a short period of time because the play ended in a sack but ultimately that's the best thing you can do to give your um, covers linebackers outside or your covers cornerbacks uh, from left to right a better chance of covering their assignments. Next up I'm going to go over blitzing. Blitzing is one of the most important things when it comes to pass defense because you always want to limit how much time your opponent has with the ball in the pocket, especially a clean pocket. I mean simple things like pressure, uh, forcing your opponent to throw on the run, uh, all these things really lessen the effectiveness of any given pass play and can make it a lot easier for the play to turn into an incomplete pass or a turnover. So when it comes to blitzing, one of the first things you're going to want to do, and I think this is something you should do on just about every single play, is blitz your user and come down into a gap in what I call gap stacking. This is very important when it comes to messing with the AI of the offensive line. So on a play like this, where we might have five, maybe six uh, pass blockers, depending on what the running back does, something simple like this coming down right over the A-gap here is a very effective technique because if, it, if the running back does go out in a pattern, basically one of the linemen has to commit to me because I'm closer to the quarterback than the actual outside linebackers, and that will essentially get them in free a lot of times. So you can see right here, as long as I just stay home for a second, it basically gets a guy off, and now we have a very easy pressure based off the fact that the running back went out in a pattern. This is something you should do just about every single play, and it's a technique that is going to be effective no matter which blitz you use. On this particular play here, I don't stay here long. I basically just press and release. I call it playing patty cake, where I basically just hit his hands one time and pull away to the point where he's left blocking nobody. If I can do this with alignment on any given play, it'll always increase my effectiveness of the blitz. Whether I'm having a blitz like this or just basically any type of blitz, but even if it's just a four-man rush or a three-man rush, I still make sure that one lineman is left doing nothing while I essentially drop right back into my zone coverage. And you can see I'm right in position just to step in front of uh, 15 who's on his crossing pattern or pretty much any receiver that might be in my area of the field. Next up, if you really want to kick up your blitz, one of the easiest ways to do that is simply guessing pass. To do that, all you have to do is hit the RB, R1 button and up on the right stick. Guessing pass will, two, will do two different things. Number one, your pass rush will be that much better. Uh, maybe a, you know, like a slight increase, but ultimately uh, your defensive ends, your linebackers, all your blitzers will you know, forego any silly play actions and go right after the quarterback. So on a play like this, which is going to be a play action, you're going to see how essentially they don't even they don't buy on the play action. They go right around that and go right for the quarterback every single time. Now, if I didn't guess pass here, any number of things could happen. Number one, this free blitzer probably would at the very least hesitated uh, with the play action, not knowing where the ball is going to go. But he, a lot of times they might even go as far as tackling the running back, which we see quite a bit, giving the quarterback essentially plenty of time to throw the ball because this is the design free blitzer. But based on the fact that I did guess pass, he just runs right past for the quarterback every single time. Whether it's a handoff or not, he's going for that quarterback 
Next up, when it comes to getting interceptions, one of the best ways to do this when the ball is thrown deep down the field is to high point the pass. To strafe, you just have to hold the left trigger and it'll turn your defender towards the quarterback or to the oncoming football. At this point, you're going to want to set up a couple of feet in front of the reticle where the ball is going to land to give yourself the best opportunity for an interception. Every time you strafe and high point, it's probably the most effective way to intercept the pass in Madden 22. And then my last tip is to make sure that you're pressing the catch button repeatedly to take away any timing needed. In the past, you could hold the catch button on defense and it would guarantee an interception based off the fact that there was no timing mechanism. But the game was basically patched for people that was doing that and you essentially get a penalty for holding the button now. But there is no penalty now for tapping the catch button. So if you want to remove the need for timing a catch on offense or defense, you just have to tap the catch button and you will make the catch every single time. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys want to see more tip videos like this, hit the like button let me know in the comments section. Other than that, make sure you're a subscriber. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.